I was called out by the local police, uniform branch. It was reported to them that they found this grave that's been dug up. So when we partly opened this coffin, we found that the body was still there, but the head's missing. So where the head was, uh, they filled that with a dead chicken. And a black candle was lying inside that was lit as well. The black candle was right inside the grave. And there was also some uh, feathers lying here. And the lady's head was here. And here we found the chicken that was there in the, in the spot where the head was supposed to be. Normally they, they use it for the altar, um, whether it's for drinking up blood, whether it's for the initiation process. Most of the times it's for the initiation of young girls where they use the head on the altar. It's very, very important to have the head. And they believe that a person's soul has gone through it. And it's a big bonus if, if this lady was a Christian. It would have been a big bonus. Quabus, a committed Christian, set up the occult-related crime squad in 1992. He keeps a macabre collection of exhibits in a sealed room next to his office. Uh, here we have two tables with witchcraft items. Quabus was alarmed at the sudden upsurge of violent satanic crimes which spread through South Africa after apartheid. Here we have human fat candles. Uh, this was discovered in one of the satanic covens down in Bloemfontein very conservative Afrikaner town. Now, the Satanists in South Africa, most of them go into crime. They must commit crimes because one of the first things a Satanist must do must go to a graveyard and desecrate a grave because they need the head for Halloween or they need some of the body parts for the rituals. These two standing there at the altar, they were also uh, arrested in, in cases. Although most Satanic crimes occur amongst whites, they're now spreading to the black community and they're increasing. Where we had two murders, I would say, per year. Uh, now suddenly we have 16 murders per year. I'm talking about uh, Satanist murders. I'm not talking about ordinary murders. Once skeptical about Satanism, what he's seen in the last 10 years has convinced Quervis of its power and influence. I was in the murder and robbery units for basically 15 years. Uh, investigating uh, all the psycho killings, all the psycho murder cases and uh, rape cases and I never thought that this will ever be a reality. I never believed that uh, basically that time that Satan was a reality. But going into, having interviews with these people, doing the practical cases, I've my own mind and moods changed completely. News has broken of a bizarre case a thousand miles away, and Quervis has arrived to investigate. We're on our way to Mitchell's Plain, this is in Cape Town, uh, to go and uh, have a talk with uh, the investigating officer, in, in uh, Sergeant Evertson, about this case where uh, a woman's stomach was cut open and where a baby uh, was removed. There were suspicions that witchcraft was involved in this case. Two photos are also found where uh, the accused was standing in front of a massive uh, hexagram and she was all dressed in black and it looked very spooky. The accused woman was caught by the police soon after the attack and has now been sent to a hospital for psychiatric assessment. Quervis wants to help local detectives investigate the part the occult may have played in the case. You see, the thing I actually need is, is, is the photos because people say it's, it's satanic. Other people are saying there's a curse that's been placed. Uh, can you just, can you just say, have you got the photos here just yeah, to show I, me? Yeah, I got the original photos here from the... Uh, okay. You just... Here. And what do you think is this? Why is the hexagram... What is that? What is that uh, writing um, there? Um, going, going to die. Yeah. That's what it actually means. Yeah. Oh. Now, where's the clothes that she, that, that she was given to the complainant? Did you call it? Yeah. Yes. The accused woman had befriended the 16-year-old victim at a maternity clinic. Do you want me to open it? Yes, please. Henry. Let's, let's have a look. She then lured her back to her house 
before cutting her open and trying to make off with the baby in a bag. Phew, I see it's full of blood as well, eh? Yeah, this is the stuff that was put in around the victim's stomach after they cut the victim open. So, what, what, what's the meaning of this bag? This is the bag where the baby was actually placed in, and that, was, that she was carrying on the back. That's correct. The scissor that was used... Is this to one? do the job. Yes. This is the uh, scissor. Yeah. That was used, she yeah, handed over to me. Uh, this is the scissor that was used... Mm -hmm. to, to cut over the yeah. stomach? That's it, yes. Okay, fine. This is a new bottle. She was having it with her when she was trying to get away with the baby. So she also bought it for her baby. For the, for the purpose, yeah. That's it, yes. And also, she did also hand this um, handcuffs over to me. Uh, the handcuffs was used when she approached the, 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 the victim and, and, and told her, listen here, I got a, a, a surprise and a present for you, for you and the baby. And took out the handcuffs. And took out the handcuffs and put it over the, the victim's hands. And, where, and when the victim asked her, what are you doing? Then she took a pair of socks and put it in her mouth. Not to scream. Not to scream. Phew, that's terrible. Astonishingly, the victim, seven months pregnant at the time, survived the attack. She's just been released from hospital, and Quervis needs to take photographs of her wounds in case he's called as an expert witness at the trial. He's accompanied by Sergeant Evertson to the house where she lives with her parents. Family. And I'm just here with helping the investigation of the case. And uh, we must just can take some photos as well of the wounds of the child. And uh, I don't want her face to be shown on, on TV. Even more remarkably, the baby also survived the attack. Quirbus will now have to wait for the psychiatrist's report on the accused woman before he can take the case further. He finds it frustrating that his own belief in the power of the devil isn't always supported by psychiatrists. You know, it's like um, the blade of a knife. Um, they'll have to go through many uh, uh, psychotherapy uh, assessments to establish that. And, and if you get a psychiatrist that doesn't know the aspect about demon possession or actually uh, doesn't acknowledge demon possession, it's going to be very difficult to prove this aspect. Quervis has been called in by detectives in Scottborough near Durban to see whether a brutal murder might be the work of Satanists. Hello. Hello. He's met by Captain Rietta Everton, like him, a committed Christian. Rietta has recently been appointed as Quervis's deputy. She's been on assignment monitoring satanic activities in the area. Any cases you heard? Yeah, the informant told me, and we had incidents of, of cats, cruelty to animals, where cats were slaughtered, and the brains were taken out, and it was uh, pushed or put a. a, a you know, the front door of the house, they yeah. smeared it. On the blood. The blood. No, the brains. Oh, the the brains. Yeah. Rietta believes her work is a battle with the devil. Even being shot at by Satanists and threats to abduct her only child 